It's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you any of the crafty goodness that I've been working on this week. Thank you so much for your patience with the little bunny pouches. Cross my heart, when I did the video and I double checked on Wednesday to get it uploaded to YouTube, that link worked beautifully. This is the second time in the past week that I've had problems like that. But I gave you guys the measurements Hopefully that helps. These are really, really simple designs, just a little square and some ears, and that's really all you need to do. And I think it's easy to go ahead and freehand the ears. But thank you for understanding that sometimes things just happen and when it's not your pattern, you can't control what goes on. I think they just randomly made their Google stuff private. Maybe they put something personal up and they just made the entire thing private, forgetting that nine years ago they had this pattern up there. This just gives you an idea of why I prefer to create my own designs. That way I don't have to rely on anybody else. I chose the backing fabric for my Tulip Time quilt. Something fun and colorful. I was going to go with the dark green and just be a solid, but then I didn't want the quilting lines to show. And then I thought that even though it's on the back, it would make it feel heavy to me. So I went with something fun and bright. And thankfully I had enough binding to use this nice bright green. And I think that this is going to be wonderful on the front. I have it all pin basted. But I think using this green is just gonna pull out the other bright green. It will match up and touch on the sides. And I like that, at least for this quilt. So I think that will be fine. I was gonna free motion this, but me in free motion while I did that with all of my quilts. And I'm looking actually at a stack of quilts over here just to squirrel off in another direction. In some of my random videos coming up, I pulled out all of the quilts that I still have here that I either haven't given away, decided to keep, some are just quilt tops, and some are, I will explain it more in the videos, but some of them I'm a little concerned. They are made properly, but I just worry about some of the fabrics and I prefer not to sell them or give them away to someone who isn't local or someone who can't fix the problems that could occur. I had free motion quilted all of those quilts and that's all I did for years and years, but then I stopped quilting, I stopped sewing, I went right into crochet and knitting. I had the problems with my shoulders, so I really couldn't do a lot of rotary cutting and pressing with the iron, so I just moved to a different craft for a while. And when I came back, I come to find out that yes, you do need to keep up practicing free motion quilting because if you go five, eight, ten years without doing it, you kind of lose that muscle memory. So instead of free motion quilting this, I think I'm just going to do some wavy lines and maybe I'll see on the machines if they have anything fun and fancy to pop in every now and then. Maybe something fun through here or down at the bottoms or in the borders or something, but it'll probably just have straight wavy lines just going across. Just It's just a little wall hanging. Well, it's not little, is it? It's just a wall hanging, so I don't think it needs anything too fancy. I did spend a lot of time working on postcards. I decided that I wanted to make postcards. I haven't really made any really creative ones in a while, so I wanted to make some fun ones for Easter and I wanted to make some hibiscus ones. So I'm going to pop in some videos here. Here's the start of my fabric postcard Sunday sewing. I have some fun little parading bunnies for Easter. Here are some of the Easter postcards that are going out and well yes they're in the plastic sleeve and I forgot again. I just get so into the process of making them and I just follow the steps one right after the other and the next thing you know they are all sealed up and ready to go. These are going out in the mail tomorrow. This is the fabric that I cut the other Easter bunnies off and just added on to. Good old Snoopy. Little duck peeking in the window of the bunny family. Jelly beans, of course. And then some fun baskets. I decided to send these out to just some random people instead of putting them in the shop. 
So I have seven Easter fabric postcards that are just going randomly to seven of you. So I hope you enjoy them and I'm sorry that I couldn't send one to everybody. Also made a couple flowers. These are leaning towards hibiscus out of my lovely batiks. So everyone on here is a batik, so I love how the green gives you that nice modeled up background. And the oranges actually have flowers on them, even though you really can't see. And then the little bee-loving flower pollen, whatever it's called, pistol, I think it is. And then I went ahead and I did orange around the outside. had the white out this year because I forgot what year it was and my fingers just automatically put 2020. But I really enjoy making flower fabric postcards so I think I need to get back and start making more of these. I think I need some tulips. It's a little shocking but I actually remembered to record some video before I mailed them off. So I have some Easter ones that I sent out to my patrons. I also made some random just fabric Easter postcards where I didn't piece anything. I just found some fun Easter fabric in my stash and I just made one. F Did you hear that bell? That's S'moresy. She found a little ball with a bell in it and it's only in this room. So the only time she gets to play with it is now because otherwise she'll play with it at 3 a.m. up and down the hallway. She has her own little quilt on the edge of this bookcase over by the closet. So she lays on the quilt and she just bounces the ball back and forth on the carpet. So if you hear the bell ringing, sorry, that's just Miss Smorzy's. If I said the wrong cat prior to that, I'm sorry, but it's Miss Smorzy's just playing with her little bell in a ball. Okay, where was I? Easter fabric postcards. I just pulled out my Easter fabric and I made one postcard out of each. I had a list of a handful of people I wanted to send them to and then after that I just started randomly pulling up names that I had addresses for to send those out to. I had so much fun making the hibiscus fabric postcards. Choosing the fabric is always the most fun part and I used the the batiks. I used some really fun bright batiks. I really wasn't sure how I was going to make the hibiscus cards. If I had to I would just kind of sketch out a flower and go from that just look at it online or look out the window and just sketch a flower because Rob's hibiscus, there was, I think there was actually five hibiscus plants in there. There was three main ones and a couple little ones that grew up with it. And all but one or two, one big one and one or two of the little guys has produced leaves and flowers. So it's really great to look out the window and see the flowers again. And the blue jays seem to like them too. They just keep hanging out on the plant I don't, I don't think they're damaging anything, but I like to shoo them away because the, the Blue Jays, they seem to be bullies in my yard. They go after my black garter snake. Now, I know a lot of people don't like snakes and they don't even like hearing about them, but I do have a large black garter snake that goes around the yard and it, it eats things that you don't want to have around. But the Blue Jay, I found it on my porch the other day. I have just a little cement slab on my back porch. And the snake had gotten hot in the sun and in a dirt patch, so it was on the cool cement because it takes a long time till about 3, 4 in the afternoon for this to get hot. And it was lunchtime. And I look out and on the little rocks that I have there, well, little rocks, small boulders, whatever, I have them on the porch so that the little lizards can run around and not get attacked by the birds. So this blue jay is sitting there on the rock with its wings out like this, like you would see a big vulture or a bird of prey. And he's just hovering over that snake with its wings out like this. And these guys are only like this big, but he had his wings out and he was just getting ready to attack. I raced around the house. I think my neighbors thought I was crazy because I went running around the house and I'm yelling to get around to the back to scare the bird away. I thought that when all the kids moved out and it was just me in the house that I wouldn't be interrupted constantly. But that time it was Miss Whiskers. I moved the chair so she couldn't get down easily on her own. And the poor girl, she is, she's 11 years old now. And I don't like them jumping from high areas down because it's too easy for them to break their legs. And she's a little bit of a, a chunky monkey cat so I had to stop to let her down but anyways chased around I had to chase the bird off the snake went slithering around I have another I'm very 
my yard is not like a beautiful yard. I don't water it in the dry seasons. There's like brown grass everywhere, but I have little areas for the animals that I like to protect to hide. So I have another little rock set up on the house so that the snakes and the lizards can get underneath there and hide, but the birds can't get to it because there's only small little crevices. So the snake went in there and, you know, they curl up really well, even when they're very long. He curled up and hid behind this big flat rock that I had against the house with almost like a Fred Flintstone thing. So it's a big flat rock with some rocks on the side. And that bird, I had to stay out there for about five, 10 minutes because it would sit on the neighbor's white fence and it would just watch. And I thought, okay, maybe... Okay, it's going to go away. Well, the snake's hiding. It's going to stay there for a while. No, the snake would peek its head out or something, and that blue jay would just dive on down and try to get it. I know it's a circle of life, and I know all of that, and that, you know, these things happen, And but this little blue jay does not need to have a six-foot snake in its mouth, you know? If I can see it and prevent it, then I will. And if it comes back 10 minutes later when I'm not looking and I'm behind closed curtains and you know, whatever it is, it is. I give them little hidey holes and I know they have to go out. So they do what they do and circle of life and all that. But anyways, I think I was talking about fabric postcards. So with the hibiscus, I just Googled hibiscus applique, hibiscus color and book outlines, how to draw a hibiscus, whatever I could. And I found some at We Folk Art. I will put the link down below in the description box. So if you want to make a hibiscus fabric postcard, you can do it too. I saved, I don't know why I'm talking like this today, but I saved the printout up in my little applique basket up there and I definitely plan on making more. The hibiscus postcards just turned out so cute, at least in my opinion. But those were at the beginning of the week and I had a main project that took me through most of the weekend and it was a two and a half day project, almost four full bobbins to make this pile. A fabric bowl cozies. I decided that since my shop is empty of fabric bowl cozies and they do pretty well in the shop that I would go ahead and make 20. I don't mind making the fabric bowl cozies. They're just not my favorite thing to make. So I try to not make them unless I absolutely need to. And when I do, I try to make so many that I might not have to make any more for a little bit. So I thought, oh, I'll just go ahead and make 20. I'll cut them out one day get the batting all set up and everything ready got everything pinned and the next day I'll just go ahead and make them well the next day I did all the stitching and I did all of the darts I put a post on my Instagram with a picture of all of these lined up with the little clips in it and all ready for me to sew the darts because you make these in two sections so you make the outside fabric and the batting and then the back side or you have two outsides. So you make the inside, <sighs> we'll get there. You make one part of your bowl with fabric and batting. And you make the other part of your bowl with fabric and batting because there's no inside or outside since they're all reversible. This time I used the same fabric for both sides so I didn't have to think about matching fabrics and threads or anything like that. So you have four darts on one half and four darts on the other. So that's eight darts per, per bowl. One week we are gonna get through a Whip It Wednesday without Robin losing control of her words. Eight darts per bowl times 20 bowls is 160 darts. And you chain piece them, but you can only do one at a time. So I can't sew like all four darts. I can only do one dart and one dart and one dart, clip them all, spin them around, do the next section. So that took me most of, um, that took me the rest of the second day. So then on day three, I spun them all out. Well, I spun them all out on day two and day three, I did all the top stitching. And while I don't mind doing most of the rest of it, the top stitching is a part that I don't like. And I've heard from some of you that you're not a fan of the top stitching either. Now I did use the same brand of batting, but I used a different batting within that brand. The last time it was a thinner batting and this time it's thicker which will give it more insulation. They're both, as I said, 100% cotton. They are both from the Warm Company. This is warm and natural. So inside here is a tan batting, as if it really matters. It doesn't, just that it's 100% cotton and cotton thread. It just makes it a little bit difficult to stitch around. I thought about just closing up the hole by hand, but 
they tend to be a little bit even poofier if you don't do the top stitching and they just look so much better if you top stitch them so i did these are all listed in the etsy shop you can see them all there but here is the owl fabric you guys have seen probably all of these fabrics already lilacs some dr seuss some robots This is a French general. I think I just call it like red flowers or something. You're only allowed like 20 characters to name your fabric when you put the pictures up and stuff. So I can only do so much. The motorcycle, I made a zipper pouch with this. The plaid Scotties, I made a tote bag. Oh, here's a new fabric you haven't seen. These really colorful butterflies. I received this in the mail recently. No, you haven't seen most some of these. So here's Tinkerbell. I used this on a pouch, I believe. Oh, here's another one you haven't seen, but it's just a red bandana fabric. We've Most of us have all seen that. Made a tote bag out of the fairy princess. I don't know if you've seen the sailboats. I think I made some type of a bag out of it. Harry Potter. Harry Potter didn't get his threads trimmed. There we go. Harry Potter, the eyeglasses and the lightning bolt from my daughter's quilt. Good old Winnie the Pooh and Tigger too. I definitely planned on the placement of that one. I wanted to make sure they were in the center of the bowl. Some chickens on black. I tried to bring in some kids stuff, so if anyone wanted any for the younger kids, so this has got the cars, but a lot of it, I would like it. I love this fabric. I have this fabric. I bought this many, many years ago from Joann's, and then someone sent me some scraps, so I turned that into a bowl. I believe I've probably made a bag out of that also. Some ABC fabric. So even if you don't give this to a child for like hot soup or something or chili or pasta, it's great for to put a bowl of ice cream in too so that their hands don't get cold or it just gives them something similar to a placemat that maybe it might contain some of the mess or at least the drips down the bowl. And it's great because they're all washable. They can go through the dryer too. I just, sometimes if you put them in the dryer, they, they are not sewn down together. I saw a pattern recently where they did put an X of quilting in the center, but they did it on each one individually and they didn't do it together. So I was thinking I need to get like a bowl and then make maybe a circle template to put in there. But then I thought, well, if I do that, I could do a small one and it wouldn't be a problem. But if I did it too large, it would change what size bowl you can put in. So if it made it all the way big, you could you put a big bowl in and it would sit nicely, but if you wanted to put a small bowl in, when I put a bowl in, I like to bring my sides up to the bowl. I know this one's too small. These are actually all the points that I cut off when I did the darts. I haven't decided yet if I'm actually gonna use them. So I thought I'd save them into this fun little container that I have and decide later if I want. I usually turn them into something like a zipper pouch or a mug rug or something. So I'll probably do it. I just was too irritated about doing this for three days and using almost four bobbins of thread. I use the same gray thread to stitch all of them on every part of it and the top stitching. Normally I try to match the thread like I would have used a black for this, but I thought it's really not that important and it would take so much more time to constantly be re-threading the machine and changing everything out. So I decided to just go ahead and use the gray all the way through and it works great on the lighter colored ones and I think it's fine on the dark ones too. You can just see the stitching more. So my Tower of Bowl Cozies is available in the shop. I want to show you something special that came in the mail. Now, normally I don't show you guys what comes in the mail. I, I don't, I don't always feel comfortable doing that. And I know not everyone has people that will send them scraps and, or has a nice stash that they can play with. I do have a lot of scraps, so I'm very, I don't want to say spoiled, but I'm very, 
very lucky to have what I have and to have people that want to send me something nice. So I never want to make anyone else feel bad because they have not enough scraps to play with and they're not able to like I know a lot of other countries just aren't able to get what we can get here in the U.S. but this is just too beautiful not to share and it's something that's going to be a future project I I know I don't have time for it right now and I want to do it justice but I want to show you what it looks like okay so we have the flamingos here and if you look, can you see the shadow of the flamingos? Like right through here, you can see that it's like, it's a gray color, a very light gray. So you have like flamingos in the background that you don't quite see. And this is a panel. So then you have your, your normal palm fronds and all of that. And then you have your flamingos. And I just love, I've seen these, my local quilt shop, I have one local quilt shop that I haven't been to in a long, long time that is on my list to actually take you guys there eventually. We'll get there one day. It's just, I don't have the need to get out there right now. And it's a little bit of a traffic drive while it's not a far drive. And it's just, I don't want to go there unless I have a nice little budget to also buy something. I don't want to just go and window shop and record if they allow it and then say, okay, thanks. I'm out of here. I want to make sure I can buy some things when I'm there. So they have these, oh, that was all to say <laughs> that they put up a flamingo panel recently. And I thought, wow, that's really pretty, but it's still this one is, is, is much nicer. I'm really, I'm really excited to play with this. So you have a ton of flamingos on there. And then look, an orange hibiscus. I love that it has the hibiscus in there and other Florida type tropical flowers. So if you're interested, this panel is Flamingo Bay by Michael Design Works for Northcott. So in case you need to get the number, if it's backwards, the number is 24290. Bum, 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 bum. There's a close-up of, this is a flamingo right there, and then you just have the flauna, flora, flora and fauna. I know one of them's like flowers and one's animals or something. I don't know. I just, I, was, I heard it the other day and it stuck in my head. What I was thinking to do is I would take the top part and maybe just do something with it. I don't know. It's, I don't, I don't think that it would be good to like cut up. It would need to be maybe a little mini to trim this off here and make this a separate mini. But on this one, I was thinking some fun pinks or some greens or purples or mix them all up, flying geese along them or some pinwheels. I think bordering it out with flying geese and pinwheels would be great. I could do like pinwheels on this guy and then flying geese on this one. I think that would work really well because this is smaller and the flying geese, while they can be any size, I think flying geese look cuter when they're a little bit smaller. So thank you so much to the person that sent me this. I feel very blessed. That's the word I couldn't come up with, but I feel very blessed to be able to receive things like this and to be able to play with them and, you know, make some of the things into videos. A lot of the things you see me play with, many of these fabrics that you see me use in my shop, it's a fabric donation and people aren't always able to donate monthly and join Patreon and support my channel that way. And I 100% never want anyone to feel bad. You watch my videos and that is a huge way of supporting me. That is like my main support here on YouTube is when you watch the videos, you like them, you leave a comment and it's always great when you're subscribed or you share them with other people. But some people aren't able to afford that, but they have a lot of extra fabric that they're just not gonna use or they might have, maybe they have five yards of this tractor so they'll cut off maybe just a half a yard or quarter yard or a full yard and send it to me and they support me that way, which then allows me to put things in my shop to earn some more money to support myself.
It also enables me to use just random purple gingham fabric in these little projects so I can show you different tutorials and use the fabrics for that. The backing on this tulip quilt was sent to me. I purchased all the fabrics for here. Not to, that sounded like I was bragging, but these are, this is what I like to purchase. I purchased the the blender fabrics and stuff like that and the white crackle. I love this in Miranda's quilt. I've used it many times over the years. It's like a staples at Joann's. So I like to do that. But when I show you guys different things, like when I show you how to use the clapper or the purple thread cutter, which by the way, now has a 60 millimeter used blade in it. Can you see how high the blades are now? So now I can't get my finger in there at all. So it's no longer a safety issue. I would never let little kids play with something like this, but I think in general, letting them use it, that this isn't something that they're going to hurt themselves on. But again, you know your children and your grandchildren to definitely supervise them and see what they're doing and know that they're going to be safe using something. There's a screwdriver rattling around in there. Speaking of this thing, does anyone know why there's a hole here? I have no idea. I, I don't know the purpose of it. Am I supposed to put something in there? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Is it just purely so that I can line it up when I go to put it back together? Or is there another reason? Maybe that's the only reason. One more thing to show you. I did work a little bit on my April birdie stitches. I was going to go live over the weekend, but I got hit with a migraine this weekend and I just, I, I could ease it up a little bit in the morning and then it would just keep coming back in the afternoon and evening. So I really wanted to go live on Saturday. I wanted to go live Friday night. I wanted to go live on Saturday and I just couldn't do it. So we still have time in the month of April to go live and work on our birdie stitches. I did still go with the same idea that I was thinking and I just have the brown for the trees. I did the green down here for the grass. I'm showing you the back. How about if I show you the pretty front side of it, Robin? Oy vey. Hey guys, look. Well, at least the back of it, when you're doing back stitch, that's the thing. The back of it looks really nice. And the way I bury my stitches, you don't see all that much. So there is, this is the back. And you can just see a little bit of the fuzziness of where I tuck my stitches in and bury them. And there's the front. Now, of course, the front is 100% neater, but I almost missed the chair when I sat down. Okay, padded room for Robin today. I should not, I'm not going to use any sharp things. I'm just going to work on videos today, so don't worry. Today is, <laughs> I'm sure you guys have all had days like that. Nobody moved my chair or anything. I just thought my butt was closer to it. So you can see the back of my stitches. You can see me almost falling on the ground. I edited that out, I'm sure, so you couldn't see it. But yeah, I tried sitting down and working on this for a little bit yesterday after I finally finished the bowls. I'm like, reward time. But then the cats woke up from their long winter's nap. That's what I call it when they sleep in the afternoon, their long winter's nap, and they were all hungry. It was like 4.30 by then, so that's quitting time anyway. Okay, that's it. That is all that I've worked on. As I mentioned, I'm going to spend the rest of today. Today is Sunday. It's 11 in the morning. I'm gonna spend the rest of my day working on the stack of quilts that I have over here to record some random videos so you guys can see some of the old quilts I worked on. I have found my original quilt and I have a bunch of quilt tops. So each video I'll probably show, depends on how much I talk, I'll probably show like five or 10 of the quilts and then maybe every other week I'll pop one of the quilt videos up and then on the other week I will put some other random type of video. I still need to go ahead and record in here so I might do that today too. Just make a whole bunch of videos today and then just take it easy because tomorrow is Monday. My daughter and I are going up to Venice Beach and we're going to, she wants to go She's calling it shelling, or what she called it? She called it shark teething. She wants to go and find shark's teeth because Venice Beach has a lot of shark teeth. They're really well known for shark teeth coming on shore. Not as many sharks, because we do see sharks 
we actually had a great white shark show up at Fort Myers Beach and not to where anyone knew. It was far enough off of the Gulf Coast that the only reason they knew it was there is because they had one of those monitors in it so they could see it swimming up along the coast and it was far enough away from everyone swimming and everything so it wasn't a problem but we do have sharks that come ashore we have manatees that come ashore we have dolphins it you know you're in you're on the gulf coast you're in florida you're going to see all kinds of creatures so i'm going up to find some seashells and she's going up to find some shark's teeth and i'm sure we'll find both but I want to make sure that I have all of my body parts coordinated so that when we go tomorrow, everything will be good. I bought a microphone for excursions like this. I just haven't learned how to use it yet. So that's on my list to do today too, because why not just wait till the very last minute, figure out how to use it. I'll test it out. And if everything works out good, I will take you guys along with me. I won't be doing a live stream, but I will take some video, take some pictures. I'll do something so that you can see what we see. Hopefully if I can figure this out, it works really good and it cuts down on uh, some of the wind and everything like that. So you'll be able to hear me. Tomorrow's supposed to be beautiful. Yesterday and Saturday, I think our high was only 75. It was in the 40s this morning when we woke up. So the house is a little chilly and that was really nice in April. And tomorrow morning is supposed to be cool also. So I think my daughter says we're getting an early start. So she thinks she's going to get here about nine and it takes about an hour to drive there. So she says that's an early start for me getting here at like 637 and being up there at eight o'clock. That's still kind of an early start. But we used to go to the beach at like seven in the morning so that you have plenty of time to find a spot on the beach, even though we're not like laying on the beach and going in the gulf and swimming and all that we're just going to spend about an hour walking up and down the shore and then come home so i mean that's fine to go at like 10 o'clock in the morning but when i just laugh when she says we're going to get an early start i'll be there around nine i'm like early start okay i get up at like five in the morning you want to try early starts okay so that's it i have to give you your scrappy word how about coordination whether you're trying to coordinate your brain with your mouth or your brain with your body, we all need a little extra coordination sometimes. I hope you guys have a very crafty week. Enjoy what you're doing, and I hope that sun is shining and keeping you warm. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.